So, on this video we are going to take a look at the thermal efficiency of the Rankine cycle and in what ways we can improve it. So, to begin with the definition of thermal efficiency. So, as we remember from lecture number one, it's simply the power that we get out of the thermal cycle divided by the heat rate that we put in. Or alternatively we can define it as the ratio of specific network per so kilojoules per kilogram of work fluid divided by the amount of heat that we put per kilogram of work fluid. So network, which is what we are concerned with when we are defining thermal efficiency, that is the turbine work. So turbine is the place where we do most of the work and network is not just what we get out of the turbine, that is the H1 minus H2, so H is the specific enthalpy at each point. We have to deduct it from deduct from the turbine work the work that the pump does. Because not everything that we get out of here we can use. We have to run the pump also and that consumes energy. And then the heat that we put in, so same logic, enthalpy difference over turbine is the turbine power enthalpy difference over the pump is the pump power and heat input in the heat exchanger is the enthalpy difference over the heat exchanger where we put in the heat. And that means that the thermal efficiency is the network which is the turbine work minus the pump work divided by the heat that we put in in the heat exchanger if we define it this way per kilogram of work fluid. Now, alternatively, we can define the whole thing through just heat alone. So, going with the same definition of thermal efficiency, specific work divided by heat that we put in. We remember from the first lecture the definition of heat input, how we depict that in the temperature entropy chart, which is what we have, are seeing here at the right side. So, remember that we, in the Rankine cycle, the whole idea of what we do is that we go over phase changes with the water. So we start heat input here first, we are heating the water, then we boil the water, don't temperature change, but we add heat, and then we superheat the steam. Then we expand, and then we condense when we move from right to left. That means that we are removing heat, and we again condense the liquid, so heat removal without temperature change. Okay, now how we define thermal efficiency, we remember that the amount of heat that we put in is the specific, uh, specific integral from beginning to end of that process. So it means that when our process goes through some shape of curve here, everything that is underneath the curve, that graphical area of the curve, is the heat that we put in. So we start the heat input here, we bring the fluid to boiling point, we boil all of it, and then we superheat, and everything that stays underneath this area is heat that we put in. And when we go through a condenser, opposite happens, we move right to left, everything here is what we remove. Now, what we put in but didn't remove that is the specific work, specific network that we get out of the system. <clears throat> what that means is that uh, our specific work is input heat minus output heat divided by the heat input. So we just write here in instead of specific network, we write it out as the difference between the heat input and heat output. And if we divide by input heat, we get 1 minus Q out minus Q in. So, quite obviously, if our Q out is reduced, then our heat input is, uh, our, our thermal efficiency is improved. Now, we can also write the specific heat, remember from the first lecture, also from definition of entropy, that heat is temperature times dS. So, dS is a differentially small change in entropy. And here obviously 
T as temperature, it has to be in Kelvin, so it's the absolute temperature. And this way, if we look at the graph, we notice that the total change of entropy in heat input has to be exactly the same as when we were moving back into the original point. So we can just uh, cross over the ds and we can define the thermal efficiency as 1 minus the ratio of temperatures. So heat input temperature, uh, sorry, the heat removal temperature divided by the heat input temperature. And this is the average temperature of heat input because we can see that the temperature varies during the input phase, but the heat removal temperature remains constant at whatever the temperature is at the condenser where we are removing the heat. So what this means is that obviously if we reduce the temperature of, of heat removal, our efficiency is going to go up because it makes this term smaller and it makes our efficiency closer to one. And conversely, and this is in practice often the more important thing, if we can increase the average temperature of heat input, that means that our efficiency is going to be improved. So these are the two key ways how we can improve the thermal efficiency of a Rankine cycle power plant, or in fact, any other power plant or thermodynamic cycle, whether we are talking about uh, gas turbines or power plants or Brayton process or Rankine process. So always, for example, the Rankine process for the uh, steam power plant is the ideal comparison process. So at this point, remember that we are still talking about the ideal Rankine cycle, the comparison process for a steam power plant. Okay, so now we got the general principle and the question is, how do we do either of these things? How do we increase the temperature of heat addition? How do we reduce the temperature of heat rejection? Well, one of the most obvious ways of increasing the average temperature of heat input is by increasing the live steam pressure. Because we are boiling water and obviously the water is going to boil at higher temperature if we increase the pressure. So what it looks like as a process means that we start heating the water here. So again, here you can't really see it because this is an actual TS chart and it means that the subcooled liquid region where we actually are, we are so close to the saturated liquid line that visually we almost can't tell the difference. But here we are, we are heating the water, heating the water. And now we don't, because we are at higher pressure, we don't hit the saturated liquid line and start boiling here yet we keep going up to a higher temperature and then we boil the liquid. And we keep the turbine inlet temperature constant. So basically this darker cycle is now our new and improved cycle with our increased live steam pressure. What it means is that we add the green area to the work. So we remember that the work is what is inside of this uh, cy uh, cyclic process, the line that depicts the thermodynamic cycle. We remove the red area. We can see that visually they're roughly about the same size. So probably our specific network is not going to change a whole lot. What does change is that this gray area is something that we don't need to remove. So it means that we get the same work out, but our Q out is reduced. That means that also our heat input was reduced. And because our specific network didn't reduce, that means that our efficiency had to go up. Now, a little bit going towards the world of real power plants. If this were a real power plant that we move inside, we remember that between the saturated liquid and saturated vapor lines, we've got the wet steam. And the further left we go, the more liquid droplets we have in the steam. So now we move deeper into the wet steam region. That means there's more droplets. And if we had a real turbine there, that turbine at its last couple of stages would get bombarded by a greater density, greater amount of water droplets, and that will cause greater amount of uh, <coughs> erosion and shorten the lifespan of the turbine. Okay, so that's probably a bad thing. We don't want to go too deep into the wet steam region. All right, then what else we could do? and perhaps also improve this problem of possibly a little bit too wet steam. 
So we can increase the live steam temperature. So now we are looking at our new higher pressure cycle. We increase the live steam temperature and now it looks like this. What happens is that again our temperature of heat rejection didn't change anywhere because we are still at 5 kilopascals. But we added uh, this new bit of heat addition and that happens at a higher temperature so obviously uh, average temperature of heat input goes up. We get more specific net power out of our cycle and the black region is what we have to also now additionally remove. So we have to remove more heat but we get a whole lot more work out and all of this addition takes place at higher temperature of heat addition therefore efficiency increases. And we get this additional benefit that we move again closer to the saturated uh, vapor line so it means that our moisture after the turbine is going to be a little bit reduced. So those were the two main ways how we can increase the mean temperature of heat input in a basic ranking cycle. Now we'll take a look at how we can reduce the average temperature of heat rejection. So that happens by reducing the condenser pressure. So lower pressure, lower temperature boiling point, lower temperature of uh, heat rejection. And now what happens to the process? We have a, maybe a little bit more complicated system going on. First of all, we can see that we add a little bit, tiny little bit of heat addition at a very low temperature here. So that is actually detrimental to our efficiency, but this is a very small area and doesn't have all that much of an effect. And we have to remove almost all of this additional heat input that we put here. And we can see that for all of this black removed heat, only this tiny little white triangle here represents additional work. So that was the bad thing. The good thing is that this gray area, which is bigger, this is our amount of heat that we don't have to reject. So the gray bit is something that in the previous cycle we had to remove, but now it became additional specific network. And the green bit is everything that was added to the specific network. So overall effect is that network increases. We have to add a little bit of uh, more heat into the cycle, but the net effect is that efficiency increases. And again, we get a little bit more moist steam out of the turbine, so we're coming down here downwards now, a little bit deeper, so that means that a uh, little bit higher moisture, but probably not terribly much.